These are the solutions to your geometry review sheet. Be sure that you are using a grading pen so that it's obvious that you've watched the video and you need to fix any missed problems. So that means if you missed it, you need to show all the steps to get the correct answer. All right, the first couple are just checking your formulas. So you can take a moment and just make sure that all of those are correct. All right, so next one, we are going to draw a triangle with angles of 35 degrees, 55 degrees, and then one side that is exactly 2.5 inch. We'll go ahead and start with the side length of 2.5 inches. So using the inch side of my ruler, I'm going to draw a line that is two and a half inches. So done with the ruler. Um, since I have a two and a half inch line, I'm also going to label that side length. Now I'm going to measure out an angle of 35 degrees. So I'm going to line up my protractor and make sure that um, the hole in your protractor or the place where you've got that X, um, that's going to go on the end point of one side. It actually doesn't matter which side you use, so I just picked the first side. And then from here, I'm going to count up to 35. So 10, 20, 30, 35 is going to be right there. Um, I know that 35 is acute, so I need to make sure that that angle is acute. I can move my protractor out of the way and then use a straight edge to connect that. I'm going to do a little bit extra just to make sure that there's some overlap when I do the other side. All right, next I'm going to measure out 55 degrees from the opposite endpoint. Same thing, line up the protractor, and now from right here, I'm going to count up to 55 degrees. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. 55 is going to be right about right there. Move my protractor out of the way. Use a straight edge. And I've got both my angles. I also need to make sure that I label 35 degrees inside the vertex. So it's going to be tucked in the angle, not as a side length. And then 55 degrees is going to be tucked in that angle right there. Um, if you want to, you can always erase the overlap, clean it up a little bit to get a perfect triangle. All right, next we are going to set up an equation and solve for some missing angle measures. Um, we definitely need to know vocabulary. So supplementary means that you have two angles that add up to 180 degrees. So I'm going to take angle A, add it to angle B, and set it equal to 180. Angle A is 2x plus 40. Angle B is x plus 20. And then all together, that's going to equal 180 degrees. So combine like terms, 2x plus x is 3x, 40 plus 20 is 60, and then we'll bring down equals 180. From here, subtract 60 from both sides. We get 3x equals 120, divide by 3, and we see that x is equal to 40. So I'll we'll put x equals 40 right there. And then to find each angle measure, angle A was equal to 2x plus 40. Since x equals 40, I can substitute a 40 in place of x. 2 times 40 is 80, 80 plus 40 is 120. So angle A is going to be 120 degrees. Angle B was equal to x plus 20. And so I'm going to substitute in 40. 40 plus 20 is 60. So angle B 
is 60 degrees. Now the final step, just to confirm that I have correct answers, both of these are supplementary, which means when I add them up, it should equal 180 degrees, which it does. So I know for sure that angle A and angle B have the correct measures. All right, next one, it would be a good idea to label your picture with everything that you know. It says that it is 12 inches by 14 inches. So this side will be 12 inches since I can see that that's shorter and then that side will be 14. There is also a two inch margin. Um, let's actually make this just a little bit bigger so you can fully see what this is saying. So a two inch margin means that that distance is two inches. That distance is two inches. This is two inches and this is two inches. So if the entire width is 12, entire length is 14. All I need to do is subtract out the margins. So this entire distance has to equal 14. You've got two here and two here, which means this remaining piece right here needs to be 10 inches since 2 plus 10 plus 2 will get us back to 14. Um, that's the longer side, so the length of the picture is 10 inches. For the width of the picture, um, I've got the total distance of 12, and then I'm going to subtract out 2 here and 2 here. So 12 minus 4 is going to be 8 inches. So 8 inches by 10 inches would be the two dimensions. On this one, I need to use the theorem on the triangle inequality theorem. So that says in order to have a triangle, the small side plus the medium side must be larger than the longest side. So that would be the criteria for it to form a triangle. If the small plus medium is either less than or equal to the long side, then that will not form a triangle. So on part A, I need to identify small, medium, and large. They might not always be in the correct order. And we'll do small plus medium. That would be 11.5. And 11.5 is greater than 9. So that would be a triangle. Okay, second one, they're all the exact same length. So I have small, medium, and large. If I do 3 plus 3, that is going to equal 6, and 6 is larger than 3. So that one is also a yes. And then the final one, um, small, medium, large, 4 plus 6 it is exactly 10, and so that will not form a triangle. So we have yes, yes, no for our three answers. Right, number six, identify the cross section of a rectangular pyramid that is cut parallel to its base. And then we'll name the cross section. So we need a rectangular pyramid. A pyramid means that it's going to have a pointy top. This is a rectangular prism, and so that will not work. Now we need the one that is cut parallel to the base. So we're looking at either that shape or that shape, and the base is going to be this bottom section right here. So on the first one right here, this one touches at a right angle. That is actually called perpendicular. That word will for sure show up on your test, so be sure that you've written perpendicular and that you understand that that means it meets at a 90 degree angle. Um, this one over here, these two lines are parallel, so this is the correct one to choose. And then the shape of the cross-section, this is the cross-section, and it's going to match what the base is for this specific shape. So we're going to say the shape is a rectangle. We do not know for sure that that is a square because it did not tell us that it had a square base. It just told us that it had a rectangular base. 
Okay, next one. This exact question is going to show up on your test, so be sure that you understand it and be sure that you know how to answer it. Um, it says that we have a proof to show what the formula for a circle would be by taking the circle and cutting it apart into somewhat of a rectangle. Um, this section right here is what they're asking us about. They're asking why that length is equal to pi times radius. If I count out my four segments, one, two, three, four, that's going to be exactly halfway around the circle. So remember that the formula for circumference of the entire circle is 2 times pi times radius. Because I only want half of that, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. And so this says that half the circumference is equal to pi times radius. So that length of the rectangle is exactly half of the circle. So when we explain it, we could say something along the lines of the length of the rectangle is pi times radius because that is half of the circumference. And that's really where pi r is coming from. All right, next one, we need to use the formula for perimeter of a circle or circumference um, in order to find the total distance around the track. From there, we can work backwards to find the length of one of the straight sections. Right away, since it says find the length of one of the straight sections, I'm going to label that with the variable. That's the thing that I don't know that I'm trying to find. Also, it tells me that the radius is 25 meters. So this distance right here is 25 meters. It's always a good idea to label anything on your diagram that you have, and that might help when you're setting everything up. And then also it tells us this entire distance right here is 500 meters. That's the total perimeter of the track. Okay, from here we're going to set up our equation. Um, the total perimeter is going to be equal to the two straight sections, so x plus x, it's this one and this one, plus the curved part. If I take that curved part here and here and put it together, I'm going to get a full circle. And we just saw that the formula for distance around a circle is 2 pi r. So I'm adding in 2 times pi times radius. That's the formula that I'm starting with, and I'm going to plug in everything that I know to work backwards. All right, perimeter we know is 500. They told us that. x we don't know, but we can combine x plus x to be 2x. 2 times pi, pi is 3.14, and the radius is 25. Um, then we can go ahead and work our way through solving. I can multiply out 2 times pi times 25. That's the same thing as 50 times 3.14, which comes out to 157. And then when I bring everything else down, it's just a two-step equation. So we will subtract 157 from both sides to get 343. That's a zero pair. That's equal to 2x. And then when you divide both sides by 2, you're going to get an x value of 171.5. And the units for that are going to be meters. So final answer, length of one straight section is 171 and a half meters. Okay, so that would be reasonable if you have 171 on both sides. When you add that up with your perimeter of the circle part, which is 157, you would get back to 500. All right, next, just a little bit of practice with surface area and volume. So four-step process. Start with your formula. 
and then we can also label the height, the length, and the width. And then we'll just go ahead and plug in all of those values. So surface area is 2 times 6 times 3 plus 2 times 3 times 2. Move this down just a little bit. Plus 2 times 2 times 6. When you do all the multiplying, you're going to get 36 plus 12 plus 24. And all together, that's going to be 72. So step four says to include units. Area has units of feet squared. All right, second part, volume, is equal to the area of the base times the height of the prism. So in this case, the area of the base is going to be 3 times 6, and the height is going to be 2. So multiply those three things together, you get a volume of 36, and volume has units of feet cubed. So area is feet squared, volume will be feet cubed. All right, next we're going to do surface area of a triangular prism. Um, this time, instead of using a formula, we're just going to find the area of each of the five faces and then add them up. I'm going to start with the two right triangles. So if I bring that over here, to find area of the triangle, I'm going to do base times height divided by 2. So 3 times 4 is 12, divided by 2 is 6. So each of those are equal to 6, and I've got two of them. Next, I'm going to find the area of the three rectangles. So this rectangle right here is a 4 by 8 rectangle. So that has an area of 32. This one is a 3 by 8, so that piece has an area of 24. And then the back rectangle is a 5 by 8, so that has an area of 40. And then from here, I'm going to take all five areas and add them up. And that comes out to 108. This is area, so that's going to be feet squared. All right, volume is going to be a little bit more straightforward. Um, we're still going to do area of the base times the height. Um, right over here, we already did area of the base. So volume is 6 times the height of 8, which means volume is 48 feet cubed. All right, these next few, we're going to work backwards to find missing measurements. So it's asking about volume, which we know is area of the base times the height. Because it's a rectangular prism, that's going to be length times width for the base times height of the prism. It also tells us what the volume is, so I'm going to substitute 960 in place of the volume. It tells me the width and the height, so I have width here, height here, and I'm trying to find the length. So length will stay as L, width can be substituted with 8, and height can be substituted with 12. All right, from here, I can combine 8 times 12 to get 96. So this becomes L times 96, or 96L. And then you'll divide by 96 on both sides to get a length of 10. And then final units are centimeters. So length is equal to 10 centimeters. 
Next one is area of a circle. So we're going to start with area equals pi times radius squared. It's asking us to find the radius, but it tells us the area. So I'm going to substitute in 314 in place of A. And for now, everything else will stay the same. Okay. The next thing that I know is the value of pi. So I can replace pi with 3.14, leave the r squared, and leave the 314. Okay, to get r squared by itself, we'll divide by 3.14. Those simplify down to 1, so r squared is equal to 100. Working backwards, you can do the square root of both sides, or just decide what number times itself is 100. So the square root of 100 is 10, which means the radius is equal to 10 meters. All right, next problem asks about the circumference. Formula for circumference is 2 times pi times radius. The things that we know, just the circumference, so I'm going to substitute 62.8 and leave everything else the same. I also know that pi is equal to 3.14, so I could also substitute in 3.14. All right, now we'll go ahead and multiply, combine what we can. 2 times 3.14 is 6.28. Bring everything else down, and then divide by 6.28 on both sides. And that's going to give us a radius of 10. Units on that would be miles. All right, and final slide is just vocabulary. So you want to go through and make sure that you have all of the correct definitions. Um, once you have done that, Go back, study anything that you missed, and that'll hopefully help you be ready for the test. Good luck.